Hello, my name is Hank Steinbrenner, the new general partner of the New York Yankees, and I'm here to assure you that even though George Steinbrenner is my father, he will have no input or say in the day-to-day -day dealings of the New York Yankees organization. Say Vincent is a rat bastard. <coughs> uh, uh, a nice guy. I think it's a bit unfair that I can't, <clears throat> I mean, that Daddy can't go to the stadium, but that's the way the miserable gimp, I, I mean, the honorable commissioner ruled it. And I'll give you five to one that I wasn't, I, I mean, <clears throat> my dad wasn't caught up in gambling. Well, see you in the Bronx. By the way, Howard Spira, eat me. I mean, eat my dad. Hey, the camera's still on, you moron. Did that go out over the air? I don't want people to know what a mess I am. wrestling on lewds or something like that, Robin. I don't know. Well, they want you to see those moves. Though. Girls, I've never seen such lethargic wrestling. I can't believe it. Last week, I don't know, wrestling got like a 27 share or the something. The main event. Well, if wrestling beat us last week, we'll give you wrestling this week. That's, that's right. If that's what people want to see, you give it to them. You'll have your own damn main event this week right on this show with uh, two girls wrestling each other going to be huge ratings. It's probably. a grudge match. They're going to be in a metal cage. I'm telling you. Would they audition 50 girls and take the worst two? You girls got to get a little action going here. My God, look at you. Next week, my wife will be wrestling. Teach you a lesson. Okay, listen, Robin, we have many exclusives tonight. Besides wrestling, we have a lot of big things coming up via satellite right now. We have a interview with that madman over in Iraq. Uh, what's his name? Saddam Hussein? Saddam Insane. <laughs> Let me see if we can just bring him up on this. There he is, Robin. That is him, Saddam Hussein. Uh. That's the guy whose country invaded Kuwait. That's right. Hello? Come My name him. is Saddam Hussein, and I have a message for your people. You listen to me, you. I'm not interested in your message. My people are coming over to kick your butt. Not so fast, my big, big friend. I am Hitler for the 90s. I am Jesus Christ on a camel. How dare you? Robin the Beast. He's the Beast. Jesus Christ on a camel? Jesus Christ on a camel. Listen to me. I wish I could drop cluster bombs on you. What is your evil message? Listen, you middle-aged rock and roller. You dare not attack my people because I have a hostage. A hostage? A, a hostage? A hostage. A hostage. Yes, I am holding captive a major American celebrity. You have a hostage there with you now? Your Ooh, most beloved media <laughs> darling. We're trying to figure out who's missing. Who could you possibly have as a hostage? If you should harm me, I will kill this beautiful woman. <laughs> Second. That's, uh... Supreme Gable? Gable. My God. Yeah. Now I know why you had the bag over our head. <laughs> now you would you would actually harm Secret Gable. Oh yes. What do we have to do? She's dead meat if you invade me. Wait a second. Now you promise you'll get rid of Secret if we invade you. That is correct. Good kill her! <laughs> She's like an albatross around our necks. We We're never coming. liked her. We're coming. Hey, what's your address so her parents can send a thank you note? <laughs> she cost the city fifty million dollars and she blew the case on top of that. What an actress. <laughs> Shut up, Secret. She sounds like she's really in danger. Want to come out here and wrestle? Yeah, Secret, you're going to be in the wrestling <laughs> rink in about two seconds. The bit's over. Look at that. She's laughing during the bit. <laughs> oh, yeah, there was real terror on her face. We're going to go to commercial. We'll be right back with the Wicked Witch, Leona Helmsley, Dr. Joyce Brothers, the Moody Blues, Pat Cooper. Everybody is here tonight. It's going to be wild. <laughs> wrestling tonight. <laughs> wrestling on the <laughs> Look who's here, our good friend Pat Cooper. Yeah, can't believe it. Can't believe we got Pat Cooper on this show. How did we get him? Man, he's a genius. <laughs> you know, the other day I was watching that other big show on Channel 9, the Joe Franklin show. Yeah. God, and he said, he said, I want to show you the pictures of some famous comedians who have dropped by our studios and left their 
pictures over the years. Right. Who did he have a picture of? A young Pat Cooper. Hey, a young Pat Cooper. 1937. God, you're beautiful, yeah. I swear to God. No, you look the same. And you, yeah, you Absolutely. Look, you look the same. And of course, uh, right packet thing. is hair colored by uh, the same guy Joe Franklin does. <laughs> That's how they know Always get your hair packaged properly. Pat, there's many things I want to ask you Ask about me tonight. anything. I have a lot of things. Pat always has something to say about every topic. No. Yeah. Therefore, He's an outspoken man. I created the perfect forum for you to be outspoken, mm -hmm. but I want to show you something first. Go ahead. I want to show you a video. A commercial we'd like to see for Leona Helmsley. Ah. And I always like to have Pat's opinion on these kind of right. things. Okay. Pat has, uh, Leona has hired a new um, advertising agency. Right. Why don't you take a look at this? Okay. Tell me what you think. All right, here we go. And now, the queen of the castle, Leona Helmsley. Hi, I'm Empress Leona Helmsley. I just fired my ad agency. You don't need an ad agency <laughs> to tell you about quality. Who's that? Mrs. Helmsley herself patrols the halls, checking your room. <laughs> Open up! Open up! You what? Are you on the can? <laughs> Don't get comfortable. You're not here for a social visit. <laughs> Excuse me, ma'am. What is it? Hey, you. I'm coming in to check the room. Are you in the bathroom? You, oh. President Bush. Hey, I'm sorry. Look, Mrs. Helmsley, I thought this was a what? class hotel. I can't even find a pencil. What? You need a pencil? What are you, Mark Twain? <laughs> and when you get out of the bathroom, come out here and pick up your socks. Look at this place. Where do you think you are? The White House? Perfection. Perhaps to you, but not to Leona Helmsley. She's gracious, but rules with an iron fist. Washer. You pay me two dollars under the minimum wage. Jesus, what did you do? Wash these plates with your nose? My name is Jesus. Your name is Jesus, but on your name tag it says Jesus, you idiot. With the help of her invalid husband, the Helmsley hotels have become a showplace for excellence. This is my Harry, <laughs> Bubala. He's senile, but he's just as big a stickler to details as I am. Isn't that right, Harry? <laughs> Every time I see my Harry on his respirator, I can only think of one thing. What a waste of electricity. <laughs> you stand there like a lock while my jade art collection is going to hell. <laughs> From the staff, we say thank you. All that Mrs. is healthy. She's so good to work for and kind to her employees too. Thank you, Jesus. Now I won't have to call Immigrazione to haul your olive-skinned ass back to Venezuela, where you have sex with ghosts all day long under the Mayan moon. The Helmsley Palace, run by a strong queen. I bust balls! The only hotel for excellence. I'll crush your gonads with my fingers! Your castle, the Helmsley Hotel. That's a series right there. <laughs> Pat, you're always so damn angry about everything. You know that. Why am I always angry? You keep getting me angry. That's the way I talk. I'm not angry. What I'm going to do is... What is it? I've devised something, a perfect form for Pat. Is that right? What I've devised is a series of flashcards. I'm going to show you pictures of people. I want you to react to them. Go ahead. All right? Tell me what you think of them. I want you to be honest, though. Yeah, I will. Oh, go ahead. All right? I want this you to be This is like one honest. of those psychological When was tests? I not honest with right. you? Just be I'm totally honest. honest. No. Totally go honest. Ahead. You think we're going to war in Iraq? Yes. You do? Yes. You believe we will be? Yes. You do? Absolutely. Hmm. Absolutely. And the country will back this country up. They'll love it. They will love it. They will be very this good. This country says somebody's got to have the balls to go over there and flatten these bastards. I see what you're saying. That ends it. Let me tell you something, Robin. I would go over to Iraq and fight, but of course, uh, I will be poolside tomorrow. And I must be laughing. The all-important pool time yeah. must be gotten in. Do I look like a flashback from the 60s or what with this vest and this? I think I'm losing this outfit. What is happening on day. your shirt? What's yes. going on in that shirt, man? <laughs> All right, you ready, Pat? Ready. All right, react. Here it is. Okay. Here we go. First? First guy, I want you to react to Tony Bennett. Tell me what you think of him. A man probably, you work with. Probably one of the greatest singers of all time. Yeah. And uh, he just turns around and once in a while he disappears and he comes back. Yeah. And then he comes back and then he disappears again. But he's what, one of the best. And what about your personal relationship with him? My different? personal relationship with him right now, we're pretty friendly now. Right. He's fine. You know, what happened yesterday is all over. What happened in the past? What happened in the past, the man turned around. I was supposed to work with him. Yes. And he turned around and said he wanted someone else. Oh. And I blew the job. Cost me 40 grand. So you were not... In... I would like now to shoot the bastard. You were? Yes. <laughs> yes. Did he really cost you 40,000? About 40,000. 20,000 a week was two weeks work. So that's, uh, that's uh, you know, that's all gone. You and can never make that money back. And now you're friendly with him. 
Yeah, we're all right. Those things are gone. It's all over. Now he's singing again, and uh, everybody's happy, and I'm uh, getting nuts. Go ahead. So uh, you have to check go. with Pat week to week, Howard. Yeah. Lola Falana. <laughs> Lola Falana, probably one of the great unknowns of our business, <laughs> right. who made it big, and still to today doesn't know why she made it big. Right. <laughs> this is a girl that I was right there when she said to the guard, please, no autographs, and there was nobody outside the door. <laughs> Now tell everybody what happened with Lola Falana and you. Well, tell when them. I was supposed to work with her, she wanted a tape of my act. Right. And I told her, who are you? I never heard of you. Why am I giving you a tape of my act? She wanted to see what I do. And when she... Meanwhile, yes. meanwhile, yes. when Joan Rivers opened for her, she didn't ask for a tape of Joan Rivers. When Dom DeLuise opened for her, she didn't ask for a tape of Dom DeLuise because these are what you call the high echelon acts. Right. I was what you call a... Who are you act? Uh, who are you act? <laughs> then she found out that I was a millionaire and she went bananas and she wanted to marry me. See, I never knew you were a millionaire before. <laughs> All right, let's take a look at this picture right uh, here. Roseanne Barr. What do you think of her? Well, she could bring back Hunts Hall. Right. That I'll tell you that right What there. about the uh, national anthem? The national anthem, probably, probably she did this country the greatest justice of all time, because now we'll get rid of that national anthem, because nobody <laughs> in this right mind. The only one that can sing it is Robert Merrill, but that's the only song he knows. Let me ask you something. You do not support the national anthem as... I support the national anthem, but not the one we got now. I like to have God Bless America, right. but the reason they won't make it God Bless America, because a Jewish man caused Earth called Irving Berlin, he wrote it. And they they don't want no Jewish guy writing the American anthem. You are saying, wait, wait, what you are saying is that, um, that in this country yeah. they will not allow God Bless America as a national anthem because a Jew wrote it? No, it has to be Francis Scott Key. That's the only one that can write it. I so see. if they can dig him up again and right. write it, I because see. we're tired of the bombs bursting in air. Right, okay. See, we like a little lemon ice once in a while in this country. I got you. All right, Please. let's take a look at this. Ah. Johnny Carson. Johnny Carson I did 22 years ago. Now, why are you not on Johnny and Carson? Very simple, because Johnny Carson, 22 years ago, looked at me, I looked at him, and he just went with a nod, and that was the end of it. What do you mean? And I haven't seen him done. Well, in those days, Johnny was drinking. Right. You see, and I never appeal to any comics who drink. Right. The minute they drink, they don't like me. I only appeal to sober people. Right. And he was not sober for about 10 years, and for 10 years, he turned around and didn't use me. Then he got sober and didn't like me altogether. All right. Now, listen. Now, hold on. I'm going to give you a chance to breathe. We'll come back with some more cards and Fine. Interested. All right? Fine. 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 Down here, Pat. Yeah, down. This is what I wanted. I want to be on television. Well, you want to be on television? Don't complain. This is it, pal. You're getting 40, 50,000 a night. Yeah. Forget about it. 40, this 40, is 40, 40, 50, 000? I'm 40, telling you facts. I heard it from the boys. Yeah, 40, 50, and a couple 000. of girls I heard it from. Oh, really? 40, 50,000 I'm getting. 40, 50,000. <laughs> hey, you wanted to do this thing. Why did I want to do it? That's because, what I want to know. Because you're, always, you're, you're lonely. Yeah. All you yeah. have to do is just show you get up at 4 in the morning, you finish at 10, 6 hours a day for 3 million. Forget about it. I know. I know. For 3 million? Three million. We can get me so numbers. You got figures. Honey, My head's going to explode. When I get through with him, you're going to quit. It's unbelievable. Uh, it's just unbelievable because television is so much more complicated than radio. It is. Don't wear your glasses. Wear your glasses. Well, who, who, you said they were getting letters. You can't wear your glasses because of letters? The executive producer, Bob Woodruff, came to me and said, so many of the women say you're handsome. Absolutely. You are handsome. You think that I am? At handsome. an angle. Yeah, at an angle. At the right <laughs> angle. Which and angle get is that? at the right angle. Now, I am going to get my, my nose fixed and all kinds of things sure. now. But so tell me about... fixed because if they cancel the show, you'll blow your mind. I know. It'll be unbelievable. I'll, be so, I'll walk around good looking and I won't have a shout. That's right. But now, tell me about these letters. The letters say what? Or the letters... He's good looking but what? I have a stack of mail this here. This is all about you wearing glasses. This, all about me wearing glasses. <laughs> and I got to tell you something. Here is the debate. I will give it to you. You tell me what you think. All right. The debate is that if I wear the glasses, a lot of the women think I'm sinister. Mm. They feel with the dark glasses I'm sinister. Ooh, I, feel with my, I feel with my big <laughs> nose yeah. that if I wear clear glasses, like, let me borrow your glasses for a second. For a second. These are clear glasses. If I were to wear these glasses, and if I was to wear these glasses... Oh, that's you! This is not a joke. <laughs> I knew it. What are you going blind? <laughs> back? Are you blind? Jesus, I can't see anything. I left my dog in the dressing room. What is he? And he's got white clips on him. I don't I know what it Because you know why? From perspiration, it slides down the glasses. It's then you go like a zero all day long, and you got a hole in your head. It's just with my heavy metal look. 
<laughs> Those glasses don't work. All right, with this middle-aged heavy metal look, <laughs> clear glasses don't work. Yeah. Any kind of clear glasses, they make your nose look bigger. Don't you think that these glasses make my nose look smaller? Well, I'll tell you the truth. I don't think the glasses make a difference to the size of your nose. All right, now, I would go and put on contact lenses, but I put these things... Have you ever wore contact lenses? I don't wear nothing inside my eyeballs. I cannot see with the contact lenses. My eyes turn red. Let me ask you a question. Yes. Howard Stern is the guy with the glasses, the way you wear it. Be Howard Stern. That's what they bought on radio. But on television, you got a big problem. Right. You should have somebody substituting for you. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> now, the, the problem is that... Please, seriously. I Are cannot... You? <laughs> on TV, on TV, I whenever I go on Letterman on one of these shows, I don't wear yeah, glasses. You gotta stick it to me. I always wear glasses. The flying guy goes on Letterman. I, I'm I, a talent. I can't get near the door. I know. And well, you wonder why Carson don't want me. Why? Guys like you that throw me off. Why can't you? You should have a picture. I can't get on Letterman. I can't get on Joe Franklin. I'm off a crime. You can't get on Letterman. That's what I'm stuck with. If you go off the air, my career is over. I know. Now what about Letterman? Though? Why won't Letterman let Letterman you? Letterman has a thing about talented people. Right. He does not want you around because if you intimidate. Letterman. He's used to people, you know, coming in from different angles. I come straight ahead. He don't want the truth on that show. He don't want anyone to stand up to him. You know what it is? He wants a lot of the young, hip comics. What am I, an old hip comic? Well, I don't know what you <laughs> Hey, I sustained for I 30 years. You. Hey, I think you're funny. What well, can I say? No taste. Well, what do I know? <laughs> anyway, listen to me. So the point is that, uh, now, for example, is the guy holding up a sign telling you me to do something? See it. I can't see anything. Go That's to why the news. I was What? Go to the news? Yes. The picture thing is over. I think this is going well with the pictures. I'm not going to the news. Ah, yes. <laughs> <laughs> Good thing I couldn't read that sign. Now let me That's tell you something. I was happy you didn't have your glasses on at that point. <laughs> Jackie Mason. Yes. Jackie Mason. Jackie Mason needs a partner. Right. Right now. Oh, what kind of partner? He needs Pat Cooper right now. Right. Because the world is ready for the Jew and the Italian to be humorous out you there. You do not like Jackie Mason? I love Jackie Mason. He's a very funny man, but he's peculiar. Right. Why you is see? he peculiar? He's peculiar because Jackie one day will turn around and just be funny, and next day he gets into politics and ruins careers. We can't have that. Okay, he's out of control. Ah, Frank Sinatra? The chairman of the board. Are you afraid to talk about I'm Frank Sinatra? I'm not afraid to talk. Why should I be afraid? I worked with him one time. The greatest thing to work with Frank is you very rarely see him. Right. See, I don't think it's a Sinatra out there. Right. I think it's a myth. Yeah. Everybody with a broken nose and goes, Pony, the old man told me not to, to tell you not to do you that show. You think Frank Sinatra's dead? No, he's not dead. He was never there. Geraldo <laughs> <laughs> Rivera. Geraldo Rivera, who has his own television uh -oh. show, does not know what the hell's going on in the show. Right. He does not run the show. He is the puppet that was on the beginning of your show. I that see. was Geraldo. That was Geraldo. All right, we'll be back with the news right after these words. Pat Cooper, the Moody Blues, Dr. Joyce Brothers is here. Supreme Gable, wrestling. Supreme Gable. We will have wrestling. wrestling. my ratings. I have my rosary and my Bible, Robin. That you always carry with you. I pray for high ratings because I tell you something, you're not going to tolerate much more of this nonsense here at WWOR. There isn't a day that I don't get a lecture. You will never, never, never have any problem with this show as long as you don't go on. I see. All right, here we go. Now, Robin, we're going to do a little news. It's with Saturday those night. words, we'll go right over to the news. No yes. idea what he's talking about. Well, not only did we have the crisis in the Middle East this week, Howard, there were other things going on. There were things going on right here at home. We already addressed that other situation. So let's get into the local news or the national news, shall we say. All right, the hell with Iraq. <laughs> Forget it. Forget well, Forget you it. already so splendidly and eloquently addressed that. I can't say anything more. Yeah, well... So anyway, we still have the jogger trial going on here in New York. Jogger trial. You know, there's always antics going on outside the courtroom. Antics. Well, and was Joe Franklin out there? No. <laughs> no, he has not made an appearance yet. Right. But Warner Brawley was there with I, Al I, 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 I can't get the tape in the machine fast <laughs> enough. I can't wait to see her. She's so beautiful. There she Warner is. Warner Brawley, who is a law student now at Howard University, came today to observe how differently a white victim was treated and how the accused, in this case, have been mishandled a lot different from the people she accused. What he just said. Well, Tawana was there, but she didn't say anything. She can't say anything because she's part of the Ink Spots now. <laughs> That's right. Wow. You're saying she's on tour with the Ink Spots? She's on tour. First of all, she's becoming a law student. Now, when did she? And she will sue herself. Yeah. The defamation of character, and I'm sick and tired of us sitting here watching this stuff when we should go out getting a gun. Right. Now, what? <laughs> well, wait a minute. Let me say something. You know, she didn't speak. She wants to be a lawyer. 
So, for anybody who has never heard Tawana Brawley speak, we have ah. a little bit of tape. Go okay, ahead. Okay, let's see. Because let's see. No, no. Don't hit the button. Play the tape. All right. No one tape. manipulates me or my family. No one manipulates me or my family. Yes. Well, great. No, no one manipulates me or my family. No one manipulates me or my family. One more time. One more no time. No one manipulates me or my family. No one manipulates me or my family. Now, what is this lawyer. why I <laughs> tell you she can make a great lawyer? All right. Because no one give a damn what she says and no one cares anyway. That's right. So when you go in there, at least it's interesting. Now, wasn't she the, the uh, girl who was just in high school? Now, how yes. did she get into law school so Very fast? Very simple. She walked across the street. All right, I see. Okay. Okay. Yeah, what else is Meanwhile, going? at the Detroit Zoo this week, an incredible story. The people were there, you know, taking their children, I guess, to see the zoo animals come upon the gorilla exhibit. Right. You can go on and start playing the tape. Okay. The gorilla exhibit is there, and all of a sudden, one of the gorillas jumps into the pond at the gorilla exhibit, and this very brave man jumped in to save him. This is incredible. This is home video. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. This man can't go by himself. Somebody help him. That's the gorilla talking. <laughs> that was Secret Gable being rescued. I'm looking there. I didn't know if don't you know one drowned not too long ago? Good photography. It's a home video camera. Okay, it's like a live sex tape. There's Jacques Cousteau on the left. Yeah. that guy Red. I love the commentary of the uh, reporter on the scene. So that guy saved that gorilla's life? Yeah, apparently gorillas can't swim. I didn't know that. They get weighted down with the hair. So he jumped in to save the gorilla. But uh, the Gary, zoo can you, official... Gary, can you swim? Uh, no. Uh, he gets weighted down, too, with his hair. I see. <laughs> the zoo officials did not call this man a hero. They called him reckless, so he will not be getting oh. an honor or a medal. That's why Mario want to carry a gun, Mario. <laughs> if a guy says something and they're calling him reckless. Right. I want a rifle now. Also, a medical alert in the news this week, Howard. I have just been informed... Go ahead and play the... Uh, the tape. The tape. Yes. I have just been informed mm -hmm. that golfers have started, or they've been doing this for a long time, a risky practice of licking their balls. Look oh. at this. Now, why oh, are they licking their... Why oh. would somebody lick their balls, Pat? Because they're tasty. <laughs> <laughs> Hold it for a second. Wow, that's unbelievable. This is something they do mm -hmm. when they're playing golf. They hit the ball. It gets a little dirty. I don't know who thought of it, but they pick it up. And they oh. lick it. Would you lick balls, Robin? <laughs> Not golf balls. No, you wouldn't. So, <laughs> anyway. Yes. Tennis balls are better. They're more furry. You know, they spray the greens with pesticides That's to keep right. the grass growing. So when you lick your balls, you're putting pesticides in your oh, mouth. My so God. So I'm playing the tape. I want to show my you this guy. God. This guy's name is Kim Yonkel. Kim Yonkel. Oh, yes. With a and name like been, that, you got to lick oh, your balls. Oh, he's been golfing for 25 years, Howard. And all of those 25 years, he has licked his balls. You don't hear him saying anything now because he's lost his tongue to cancer. Oh, oh my he got God. Off, they took out his tongue. So here's some practices that are safe for cleaning your balls. You can pick your balls like this guy is doing. Right. Or you can wash your balls in a special ball washing sack. <laughs> yeah, I'm going to take another shot. Don't lick your balls. I okay? see. Okay. And I hope Jessica Hahn is watching this week. <laughs> don't lick the balls, Jessica. <laughs> with you, Robin. I never thought it would happen. Uh, Dr. Joyce Brothers has married Stuttering John from our show. Oh, is that what this is going on? And the two I didn't know why they were here together. Yes, it's unbelievable. <laughs> you know, I, I must confess, Robin, I have a very difficult time recognizing Joyce Brothers because she's always changing her hairstyle. Yes. <laughs> yes. And uh, it's very, very difficult. She's sort of like Madonna. You never know what she's going to look like. I like Madonna. That's a very good uh, analogy, Robin. <laughs> Well, I must say, doing your show, I am really pressing the limits, as Madonna does, you know. It's a very strange and unusual show. Sure, it's the reason I have this mutant sitting next to you. <laughs> Thanks. She's probably, no. she's probably saying, Thanks, why is he sitting next to me? This is uh, our reporter. I would like you to take a look at the following clips and show you what he does for yes. a living. He is yes. a stutterer. Uh-huh. He stutters. Yeah. That's nice. Too. And, uh, why... Uh, can Wait, he looking? stop stuttering or... Uh, oh, certainly. Well, if he does, he's off the show. <laughs> <laughs> all right, we sent John out to interview some celebrities. Yeah. Analyze this for us, if you will, oh. all right? We sent John out to... Uh, where did you meet Dick Clark? I met him at the, uh, 
Emerson Radio Awards. What was that? Oh, the Emerson Radio Awards. Emerson Radio yeah. Awards. Now, calm down. What does that mean? What does that mean in childhood when you start stuttering, uh, Dr. Joyce? What, 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 what is that? What is that? Sometimes you simply parents who kept, uh, it's normal for a child to repeat words and have problems speaking. And sometimes parents are in such a hurry that they keep saying, well, slow down or make it clear. Well, are your parents and, in a hurry, but, John? But not necessarily. Huh? There are some indication that it is an, uh, a, an effect on the brain. Uh, and it is something that you can deal with. And so it he's can brain damaged, is what you're saying. No, all right, no. I told you you were brain damaged. And Dr. Joyce is backing me up that you're brain damaged. There's something wrong with you. And that's what she said. You know what it is? You probably wet your bed and your mother never cured you. That's what happened to you. But good thing for you. I never wet my bed. Good thing for you. talking about boys. Hey, hey, listen to me. Good thing you do stammer and stutter because, uh, after all, when you met Dick Clark, it was pretty funny. Now, watch this interview. You, you know Dick Clark, right? But, but, yes, what is his talent? That's what I'd like to know. Uh, it's not his talent. It's the picture that he has on the wall that, that gets older and older, and he never does. Just watch I, I would love to right. one of how embarrassing you when every man slobbered a proposal on our national television? When he slobbered a proposal on our national television? I don't even know what that means. <laughs> I, you know, on the uh, TV commercial, I don't know if I'm not. Um, <laughs> there's the first question. <laughs> <laughs> we ever, uh, we ever naked behind the podium of, uh, on a bandstand? <laughs> Uh, what are you purporting to represent here? Well, I, I saw that that's why I'm having problems getting at the questions. But I'm, you know, I'm, Am I on bloopers? <laughs> <laughs> All right, let, let me ask you. Did you kill Dice Clay's television series? No. Because because there is rumors about that. Of course not. How do you react to the rumors? I don't even answer them because they're without foundation. Will you see Fort Failing? Do I see him failing? No, no, no. Will you see his old C Ford failing? Yeah. Probably. <laughs> did MTV... Did MTV... I'm really sorry I'm bad here. Did MTV rip, rip, rip off your uh, dance show? Oh, people have ripped that dance show off since the beginning of time. Why should they be any different? Uh, no, I agree. Does, um, a shout out Stephen sound a done to you? <laughs> I don't believe you. Did Howard ask you to ask me these questions? Was he such a coward that he wouldn't show up and ask them himself in person? Howard, the next time you want to do this to me, show up. <laughs> Thanks a lot, Dick. Appreciate it. I had no idea what you were. <laughs> hey, that was good, huh? John has this weird thing that if he shakes a guy's hand after the interview, then everything's okay. Well, hopefully they what don't. What is it, like a superstition? No, I just try and make friends with them so they don't, like, go... He doesn't want to be hated. Yeah, you know, I don't, I don't want to uh, bad mouth him at the, 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 the interview. That's easy for you to say. That's good. I like when Joyce makes fun of a stutter. Oh, man. You know, all, we were bad now. Then you know Satan has taken over the world. Where's my rosary? Let's read from the Bible. All right. Oh, let me tell you something about this this idea of, of the uh, the uh, subliminal. Are you I'm stuttering? Stuttering. Well, Are when you marry a man for all these years, you catch his habit. Yeah, I see, yeah. Uh -huh. no, the, the subliminal idea of uh, that you can change behavior uh, and people who can improve themselves with the subliminal tapes. A man has just done, uh, in California, a very interesting piece of research where he gave... Don't you want to know the answer, Howard? Bishop, all I know is I want to see a cure for stuttering. A cure for stuttering, Joyce, a cure. Not a research. Everyone's always doing research. Is he talking about stuttering or subliminal messages? I don't even know what the topic is. I'm confused. <laughs> <laughs> I'm dying. It's oh, oh, night. Oh, 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 oh. I'm looking for Joyce to give a quick answer. She's going into study. What kind of study is that? Well, there is no quick answer. My audience hasn't read a study ever in their life. <laughs> My audience can't read. Joyce, I'm, I want you to watch John Amos now. Just, uh -huh. just watch a little bit. Don't okay. talk about studies. Come uh, here now. Listen to this. Now watch this. All right? All right. You go write a book on your own time, not on my time. <laughs> I do do. Uh, not to my knowledge. <laughs> do you smoke pot? No, I don't. Not any longer. It's not from the city. Do you think that uh, Mandela hates Jews? <laughs> no, I don't believe that at all. Why did he even bother putting, you know, hair and eye color on Chinese licenses? <laughs> what I know, man. <laughs> all right, let me ask you. This is not, no, this, this isn't meant to be any kind of uh, racial or anything, but you think that two lives through it? How the f did you get this job with a speech impediment? That's just a <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> okay, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Come on, John. <laughs> ah, uh.
Hey, uh, is that is that good or what? I'm afraid to ask Dr. Joyce. Might go into a 15 explanation, 15 minute explanation on that. But Joyce, you're on TV. You can't just start quoting from studies and stuff. Nobody knows about that kind of stuff. Why not? You got to wrap everything up in a few seconds. Like oh, okay. how do you? Yeah. You know, how do you like this? Do you like this part of the show? <laughs> not really. No. <laughs> not a few seconds. Oh, oh, did not it like really. me? Well, I like you very much. You thought I he did a good like job? It. I think he does a fine job. I just don't like people. How is it that like wrestling beat us Saturday night, Joy? <laughs> You guys are so great. You know what I mean. You guys have amazing. And you look good and everything. And you're on tour, right? Look, yeah, oh, you can have something you can answer. Yeah, you don't answer. Don't answer. answer. <laughs> yes, we're on tour. Yeah. I haven't, I haven't asked you any questions <laughs> that you can answer. Yeah. Let me say yeah. something. I spent many years listening to Moody, Moody Blues records. Yes. Yeah. Uh, I, I didn't, I'm sorry to say now that I actually smoked marijuana while listening <laughs> to those records. Yes, and but I've, you don't blame them. I do blame them. Oh, and I'm here to announce a lawsuit. All right, we're going to play a little now. What are we going to okay. play? Oh, we're going to do um, a song from Days of Future Past. It's called Tuesday Afternoon. Right. Tuesday
guy's a millionaire. <laughs> hey, seriously, you all you got great. That is really good. You guys are millionaires, right? <laughs> you deserve you deserve to be millionaires. I mean, there's just no two ways about it. But do they still sit in rooms practicing all the time? Of course they do, Robin. That's the best day. Yeah, you can believe it. Now, what about the tour dates? You should talk about that, right? We should do plugs because, uh, let's face it, the Moody Blues are on tour. If you don't go see them, this is going to be the yeah. last tour, right? Then you guys are retiring to your castle. You know, they don't say the right thing. They go, oh, we're going we're on retiring. forever. Yeah, we're, we're going on forever. forever. You guys got to learn something. I'm going to teach you Moody Blues one thing right now. Yeah. Don't say you're going on forever. <laughs> say Justin's doing a solo album. They're breaking up the band. He's going off on his own. He wants more of a take. Yeah. Say anything. What Make, give people the impression. <laughs> of course, you always do that, don't you? <laughs> so Justin tried to break away from the band. Now you guys, you smack him around. You see, you do. You smack him. You just stay right where you are. Let me tell you something. You guys, you guys yeah. must learn. You must learn to yeah. market. Listen, I got an idea. I'm talking about marketing now. Yeah. You guys want to do a second song or not? You want to do a second song? Because if we do a second song, I got yeah. Go-Go Girls. <laughs> now, remember the old days of Shindig? We play a second song, and then the Go-Go Girls, I'll choreograph the whole thing. They'll dance around you and stuff. But yeah. I got hot-looking Go-Go Girls. I don't believe you. No, these are real Go-Go Girls. These are real Go-Go Girls. These are real Go-Go Girls, Justin. And what song can we do? And then they dance. And I got them in skimpy outfits. Yeah. Tell me that won't look what good. Very, uh, very high tech. No, I, I, I think you should form a British square. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> oh, you don't want to do, you don't want to do another song? We'll face out with. I'll jam with you. I'll play the drums. Oh, good. What? Something good. Something good. Alright, okay. yeah. right, where's the go-go girls? Let me, let me, alright, you start, I'll bring them in. Get, you bring them in while they're doing yeah, it? Yeah, yeah, I know what I'm doing. Alright. Key, keyboard player looks horny. I'll tell you, you like to see him. Alright, Secrete, you're one of them. There's one of them, alright. Alright. It's Roseanne. Kind of like a, uh, uh, what about her? Now, okay. she's good. Come on. So you guys got to dance to the music. Mine, right? Alright, here we go. Alright, here we go. Okay. Nobody get nervous. Three, four.
the end of a mediocre career. Oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> the Moody Blues, you guys are great. You know it, yeah, right? I don't have to stroke you because you know how good you are. It's a good thing that was a well, short song. I thought Secrete was going to pass out. Yeah, so Secrete was, at that point, Secrete was hyperventilating <laughs> halfway through the song. <laughs> good to get her moving around a yes, little bit. Yes, you know what good I, mean? for her. I want to thank my good friends, the Moody Blues, for coming on. They're great. you got to go see them on yeah. call. It's the last four. Wrestling, Robin. Wrestling. <laughs> how do you get in here? Howard, Brutus Beefcake? Yeah, how do I look? How do I look? I hope these are real girls. Now, this is oil wrestling, Robin. Now, hold it a second, girls. I want to do this like the wrestling that they do that beat us in the ratings. Well, you got to tell them why you're all upset with each other. Oh, that's right, right. <laughs> hey, you, I'm upset with you because uh, you should have stuffed your bra somewhere. <laughs> hey, wait a second, <laughs> here. Whoa, whoa. Hey. Oh, 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 o